Hi, Phil Lindsay here with Pete Magazine, and we're here at the Hilton Hotel, ahead of Matt Stark's debut on December the 9th. And it's been a little bit of a whirlwind sort of being brought into this one, but uh, what's, what's, what's happened? What's, how have you been brought in for this show? Um, what's the story? Well, I get up to, to Matty's gym, you know, and I do a bit of sparring. I've got to know Matty well. And obviously, you know, a, a space became available on the show. He said, you want on? I said, 100%. You know, I want to try and fight as much as I can. Um, certainly at this stage of my career, got to get those, you know, get those wins, get those fights in. And obviously with everything that's went on, I haven't boxed in 20 months. Mm -hmm. Long, long layoff, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy, you know. I'm happy Matty's got his own and I'm, I'm ready to make some noise. Well, it's, again, it's the, the same momentum as the key word. And obviously, you're obviously fighting last February. And then, you know, at least in terms of ring time, no mm. progress since. But this is where you can get back on the horse in terms of getting... And obviously, Matty's got some, uh, I think, three or four shows. That's just Matty's shows planned yeah. next year. So, obviously, things go well with this one. Mm -hmm. Get that momentum going again. But in terms of your background, you've had one fight last February. Mm -hmm. Um... What's your boxing background in terms of from then, but also yeah. what's brought you here now? So I made my pro debut, that was uh, 29th of February last year, and straight into lockdown. Um, but before that, I, I haven't got any amateur boxing experience. I had 14 unlicensed fights on local unlicensed shows in the Northeast. Um, won them all, 12 knockouts. So I thought, you know what it is, why not? Give the pro game a go. I feel like I've always trained like a professional athlete. Um, very disciplined, very dedicated. Um, so, so why not? You know, it's funny. You know, I've I've done so many interviews, and sometimes when you just look into a, a, a your eyes, take this as an insult, as a compliment, whatever you want to do. But it's it. It's like I'm looking at Glenn Foot. Glenn Foot. Glenn Foot's eyes, just yeah. in terms of it's just a little bit short on the movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but it's it's just like this. There's a you've got a fight as eyes, and you're there. Mm. Yeah. Because that, that's one of the things with Glenn. It mm -hmm. was he, he always came to fight, and he was yeah, yeah. Game as a badger, fire in his belly, stalwart for Northeast boxing as well. Yeah. But uh, obviously, yeah, that's just the eyes. We've got the. How would you describe your boxing style in terms of aggressive? Yeah, very aggressive style. You know, um, maybe it's been too aggressive in the past. Uh, it worked well in the unlicensed scene, but this is a completely different kettle of fish. You know. Um, professional boxing you know you get a lot of lot of different skill sets you know and um, as well just saying uh, talking about journeyman you know so a lot of the first fights you know in a boxer's career probably be journeyman type fighters now these lads they know how to they know how to sort of drag a fight out they know how to not get you know not get hit not get knocked out they bring a different sort of skill set themselves and they're always looking for a, a big loop encounter Something like that. And they always come to fight as well, you know. Always come, they're always ready to, to try and catch you. So you've got to be, you've got to be prepared. You've got to be careful, you know. I think you're coming through on the more on the unlicensed side of things. It's you get a lot of top amateur boxers. Tom Stork, that's a prime example, where mm -hmm. top, you know, GB captain, all that side of things. Mm -hmm. But he was too ingrained in maybe the old-fashioned amateur style, yeah. and that didn't translate towards his pro career, where yeah. the, the unlicensed, it's probably more suited maybe towards the pro game in terms of... Mm. Yeah, yeah, possibly. ...the of the fights. You know? Um, and a lot of me fights, you know, you would, would fight 6-2s, 7-2s, um, things like that. So, you know, it's, it's you're doing more rounds essentially, albeit it's a minute le a minute shorter, but you're doing more rounds than you would in the amateurs, where, you know, three twos, three threes, maybe set you up a little bit more. Um, I don't know, you know, um, we'll just have to see. I know I'm ready for it, you know, I'm 100%, I'm game, game as a badger. Talking about, you know, having that, that sparkle in your eye, you know, I've got that fire in my belly and I'm, I'm, I'm just game as a badger, you know, I really am, I'm ready to, to try and make some noise, you know, uh, I've got a I good following. It. I really can see it, and yeah. I, I like it. You know, I'm, I'm hungry. You know, you've got to be hungry. Just, you know, when the hunger, the hunger goes from a fighter. You know, there's no point. Phil Jeffries. I ain't just for you, Phil. 
Phil Jeffries is in the house once again. Hungry like a wolf, isn't it? What's that? Hungry like a wolf. Hungry like a wolf. How? Oh. So, short-term goals, long-term goals in in professional boxing. Mm. Uh, short-term goals, you know, win these two fights and look at next year. Maybe he's, maybe he's an area title, something like that. Um, and long-term goals, who knows? British title would be absolutely amazing, you know? You know, that's what everyone dreams about. You're the best in Britain, you know, and then take it from there. But, you know, I'm not looking past these next two fights. Get them out of the way and then, you know, I'll think about what, what comes next year. But, but I'll, I'm fully focused, fully focused on the December 3rd and December 9th. And I just want to try and get as many people there as I can, you know? Like I say, I've got a good following. Um, so, you know, let's, 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 get, let's keep that going, you know? Matt Stark. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, brilliant. Cheers. December the 9th and when? Uh, the 3rd. December the 3rd. That's Phil Jeffrey's show. Rain and Meadows. That's sure. MTK as well, isn't it? Um, is that MTK no, or that's, not? that's Phil's. The MTK show is the 13th. 13th November. It's like, wait, I was meant to, this, isn't it? There's so many coming along. But I was meant to be boxing on that. I was meant to be boxing on the 1st of October. That show mm -hmm. got cancelled. Then the 13th, next weekend. I didn't get on that show for whatever reason. So it's been frustrating, you know? I've got to tell. I've got to sell tickets to people and tell them that show is cancelled. Sell them for the next show that's cancelled, which is annoying. But hey, look, he December third. Shite there, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> he it's a lovely shirt. Cheers, man. He's had a shave and he's done his hair. Look, he's got his tulip on. I cut it myself, man. <laughs> Matt Stark on that bombshell. Good luck yes. on both fights, December the third, December the ninth, yeah. and I shall see you on the ninth show. Definitely, mate. Brilliant. Thank you. Cheers, Matt. Cheers. <laughs> hey, Chris. Thanks, Cheers, Matt. Top man.